welcome everyone and especially welcome to you Devon hey hi thank you so much for having me thank you for joining it's obviously very bright where you are you're in LA are you that's right I'm in LA I'm in Burbank so it's nice and sunny I can see the sun behind you but I can feel it's like I felt so much light when just before you came on so I don't know if it's the sunshine or if it's you or it's or it's both it's a combination oh hopefully at least a little bit of a combination thank you (laughs) ray of sunshine (laughs) thank you so much (laughs) um so what is it that you want to ask about well i wanted to ask a question about soulmates so i wanted to ask you what um the angels have to say about what a soulmate should feel like um how we'll know that someone is the soulmate that's meant for us the person we're meant to be with and if it will be the person that we expect it to be Ooh, that's cute that's a cute question because it's got a few little like twists (laughs) exactly there's a lot of questions that go along with it it's a big one is it something that you are actually interested in for yourself Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that um, I'm interested in it for myself. And um, sometimes that you want to find out, okay, is it my, are the signs right? Or am I following them the right way? Um, So yeah, definitely for myself, but just in general, I have an interest. Okay, great. Okay, well, I'm just gonna tune in and, and see what comes out. Okay. We welcome you, Devin. We are delighted to have you and to have this opportunity to communicate with you verbally, because as you already know, we do communicate with you all of the time, but not always verbally. And sometimes the human mind likes to have words likes to have things put in words and it can be very helpful although for most of you you know instinctively when you are on the right path and you know instinctively perhaps also the answers to most of the questions that you're asking so you will know by the way that you feel about our answer whether it is actually the answer for you. And this is probably a very important thing to emphasize that just because we say something doesn't necessarily mean it's true for you. And that can that's everyone who's watching. Um, so when you hear a piece of information, have a little check-in, check in with your heart and check in with how you feel. And if it makes you feel lighter, if it makes you feel a sense of joy or excitement, then it's probably true for you. And if it makes you feel in any way that your energy has been lowered or brought down, definitely not, not true for you. So we would begin your soulmate question by mentioning that you do have soul agreements when you take human form and your soul agreements are the ones which are inevitable for you. So, so they're, they're not really, hmm, they are certainly subject to free will, but you will find that if you take a turning that leads you away from one of your soul agreements or soul contracts, you will be guided to take another turning that leads you back. So it is like being constantly guided back. So you might even find that the person who you've agreed to meet, you meet almost very much by accident. It doesn't seem that you did it deliberately. It it just will come sort of out of the blue. And some of the ones that you meet very deliberately could well be beautiful people and, and absolutely entirely lovable and tremendous 
companions and tremendous partners for you. So it is not necessarily always true for all of you that the soulmate is the one that is the easiest or the most fun or the most loving or companionable or easygoing or delightful. It can be that the soulmate is the one when, with which you have agreed to move beyond your comfort zone, to expand your horizons and to do more than you felt you were capable of doing. It's really all about you finding out more about you. So finding out hmm, what happens in this situation, what happens in this situation, how big am I? How powerful am I? How strong am I? How, how much can I grow? But how much can I expand what is possible for me? And how much can I find oneness? So find unity with all. So it's all about finding ultimately that your soulmate is everything and everyone that ever existed and ever will exist because you are all one but on that journey to being from being individuated as you are taking a human form that is a human being and a personality from this journey to the oneness consciousness there are steps in which you might encounter other human beings and have relationships with them and these are these relationships are really experiments and adventures in themselves because you can learn a great deal from a relationship with another human being in some ways you learn more about from your about yourself from these relationships with other human beings than you really do if you don't interact with other people so let, let us say your boundaries could be explored or your your, even your capacity for joy, your capacity for love, your capacity for appreciation, your capacity for exploring what it is that you are capable of is explored more in relationship than it is when you are alone. Not always, but, but generally. So if you meet somebody and you feel that there is a sort of like a magnetism between you, almost like a familiarity. So yes, I, I feel like I know this person already. I don't feel like this is a new person. I feel like I know him or her. And we almost don't need to speak. There's the sort of a, a feeling that you're connecting at other levels and you've already connected. So it, it, it's, it's almost like your, your mind is catching up with something that's already happened. You can feel like you're stepping into something that's already happened more than that it's something entirely new. And there will be delight in it. There will be joy in your contact because it's a remembering. And it's like, oh, I know you. <laughs> and they, they're easier for you to be with than, than people who you don't really know. So you just feel more at ease. You feel more yourself. You feel perhaps hmm, more excitement than with people that you don't really connect with. And it can be really fun, but you might find that things begin to become challenging, but in a way that you can see the potential for growth. So it may be that your soulmate is someone who has gifts and talents that they've explored and that they've developed. And you look at him or her and think, hmm, I wish I could have that, or I wish I could be more like that. So you, you begin to emulate them. And this is a very positive thing. It's a, it's a very useful thing to have people in your life who you can admire, but also emulate. So this is, this is very useful. We would perhaps advise or suggest that if you are beginning to feel that you're in a relationship with a soulmate, but it is not a happy one, that, that there is some reason to low, that it lowers your energy or that it takes from you energetically, that you do not need to stay. You can decide, mm, 
okay, so I've learned what I need to learn and I can now move on and find someone else to play out this scenario. And there are always more opportunities. There are actually unlimited opportunities for you to learn everything that you wish to learn. But as we have already said, when you meet someone who you've already had an agreement with, it will feel familiar to you. So it will feel like, yes, I know this, I've been here before, and there's something in this for me. There's some gift, there's some learning, some experience here. And so you will have an opportunity to find out what it is and to encompass it and to embrace it and to develop it. But you will equally have the free will to change your mind and move on and find something else. So it's not something you're completely tied to if that makes sense. It's not a prison sentence. <laughs> right. Not... Right. No, absolutely. Thank you. No, that makes a lot of sense. So much of that was very helpful and, and resonated a lot and was expressed very beautifully. So no, thank you. That, that helps a lot. And I think that makes sense. And that's very comforting to know um, that it just kind of comes down to feelings and you always have that option to do what feels best. Do what feels best. And you know what feels best. You always know. Right, right. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was a great answer. I appreciate it. You are so welcome. Thank you for, for being willing to ask the question. No, of course. Of course. I'm glad that I, I got to, um, you know, witness it. And I was very happy to to write about your work. So it's great to be here firsthand and, uh, you know, see you use that, that gift, that talent. Thank you. Thank you for yeah. giving me a chance. <laughs> of course, of course. I appreciate it. And uh, no, I appreciate it so much. And um, thank you. And I love, by the way, I love your outfit. It looks so pretty, the um, oh. green you're wearing. Thank you. It's Is a it very just a Irish top? Color. I know. It's a, it's a dress. It's oh, actual, very pretty. Yeah, shirt dress. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. Yeah, is it an Irish brand or is it? It is. It was called Donald Davis of Dublin. Oh, wow. Very and nice. it belonged to my grandmother. Oh, my gosh. That's so yeah. pretty. Did you have it um, altered at all or you just wore it as yes. she did? I'm wearing exactly the way she did. Yeah. Oh, very nice. That's great. Yeah. Oh, well, it you. looks Yeah, it looks beautiful. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, of course. Well, no, I'm so glad. I hope that it was a positive thing for you because I know you're tuning into that energy. It was um, really good. Fun. Thank you. Yeah, of course. And have a good rest of your night. I know it's getting to be nighttime there. So um, have a good night and rest of your weekend. And thank you again. I appreciate it. And it's very helpful. Everything you said. Well, I'm so glad. Let me know how you get on. I will. I will update you with, with uh, what's going on. I will use your answer. Thank you. Thanks. Namaste. Thank you. Thanks.